Okay, welcome back to Nick Lage's Comic Quarter, Classic Class, Non Classics. This episode number 1275. Yes, I've actually reached this far. And the 1179th episode. Yep, 25 episodes away from reaching episode 1300. I mean, this is my longest running series. I've been running this one for like a little over seven years, basically, of running this series. And this is how many episodes I've done so far. Right now, this one, 1275, which that is amazing. The fact that I've done this much. I bet some, and I bet some people who do review shows probably may or may not reach this high as I did. The only reason why it's up this high because I do more than one episode a day. <coughs> now, what two books do this one? Two digital books. Don't worry, next one will be physical. Alright, first up it is... The Flesh by Mark Wade, book number seven. This is the Pentalum trade, from what I can tell, there's still one more trade to come out for this one, that collects Mark Wade's epic run for Flash. I mean, look at how many issues the guy did for the book. He did a lot of issues. And people think Jeff Johns are was long. I mean, Wade did a lot. Not just the main series, but he did some one-shots too. Yep. And, of course, he's got several co-writers in this book. Oh, yes. Yeah, Brian Augusto, who's, who's majority of his co-writer for this book. Oh, Michael Freeman, who, who, if you don't know who this guy is, the only comic he did aside from Flash, he worked on the Dark Stars ongoing series from 1990s. Yeah, he's one created the Dark Stars. He's also known for being a Star Trek writer. Yes, a lot of Next Generation novels from the 90s were written by him. I'd say a good majority of them. And the guy writes fantastic books, by the way. Also, Scott Beatty on the art on the writing. The artwork in here, you probably like, really? They threw these people in here? We have the legendary Gail Kane on the artwork. Yes, Gail Kane of Amazing Spider-Man fame. Yep, Joe Stanton, a guy who passed away just last year, believe it or not. I'm not kidding about it. Look, look it up, the guy passed away last year. Uh, Kelly Mart uh, Kenny Martinez, the late Jim Perro. This guy did not pass away last year. This guy passed away over 15 years ago. He passed away in 2005. What did you get to answer me? But one, one guy who I've said who has met him, Chuck Dixon... He worked with him on Tetra Comics. The guy was a great guy to work with. The guy did for fantastic artwork. We also have Pop Man, William Rosito, Josh Hood, Paul Alpeliter, Craig Rosser, and Todd Nudick. The cover art is done by Steve Lito. This particular book is like a lot of one shots for Flash. Like, oh my gosh, like a lot. I mean, of the main book for Flash Flame 2, it contains just issues 140 to 150. And issue one million. Everybody like really only nine issues one million. What else does it contain? It contains these following one shots: the life story of the Flash, Flash Secret Files number one, Speed Force number one, Flash and Flash eighty page giant stuff taken from the years of nineteen eighty seven to nineteen ninety nine. Like wow, that is something. Now, if you keep you curious of how long this stuff is, the life story of The Flash, this is a long, long one-shot. If you're curious, though, in the book itself, on the table of contents page, it says starts page 7, and it doesn't stop until page 100. It is exactly 94 pages. It is a long one-shot. What this book is, it's a bridge. It's basically sort of a modern retelling of the Barry Allen's time as The Flash. Minus some of the Silver Age hijinks. Mostly it's like his romance with Iris. And, well, his attempted marriage to a, to a second wife. Who actually never got a chance to marry him. The, the, it's basically a, a retelling of... It's basically a biography of the Barry Allen Flash from his debut. Up until modern day. But without the, the Silver Age stuff. It's a very, very fantastic one shot. Mark is a lot of text in this book. Yep. Next up is the, well, it's a short story from Flash Secret Files. Yep, it's called Run of Luck. Yep. Now, in the case of the Flash issues, the very first one is when Wally marries Linda. Finally. 
took him long enough. Took him almost 40 freaking issues to finally marry her. And he does. It goes off with no problem. Though he does have to briefly run off to write his vows. But here's the thing. Like in the case of the Donna Troy, her marriage to her husband, no servants interrupted the ceremony. It was a very small ceremony, which is basically Linda, her parents, and I think Jay Garrick, and I think Iris was there as well. It was really good. Yep. Plus also, we also had to deal with, I kid you not, there's also a villain appearance in the storyline. Who is this villain? Maxwell Thorne. Well, Thorne. He is the brother of Eobar Thorne, a.k.a. the Reverse Flash. Yeah, this is a story involving Reverse Flash called Chain Lightning. Yes, Reverse Flash shows up here, mostly just Wally fighting him in modern day throughout the many times, basically, he was running throughout the time stream. Though they do, in fact, revisit this later on toward the end of Jeff John's epic run for the book. Mm hmm. Yep. The all story involving Max Mercury, which is really good. Screaming Skull, it's a minor villain pops up in here. Yeah. The artwork in here is fantastic, and I do recommend it for fans who are people fans of the Barry on of the Wally West Flash. You would thoroughly enjoy this. It's really good. And sh and yes, if you're curious like how many issues are left like from this run, well, technically the last issue that Mark Wade wrote for the series was 161. That was technically the last issue he wrote. Though he did come back there at one, one extra issue, 163. Which he actually, after that, he didn't write the book ever again. Until he came back to the book. <laughs> he was one of the two creative teams on the book. The book was revived. Like a year after the book was briefly cancelled to make room for the Flash Fast Men's Life series. Which just starred Bart Allen as the Flash. Yep. It's just a really good trade. And mostly it just, well, a lot of the Flash family appear in here. Like everybody. Not only Wally West, we also have Bart Allen who's still in Pulse at this point. Yeah, he's not Kid Flash and until 2 else, but yeah, that's Jeff John did that. We also have Jay Garrick, Jesse Quick, Max Mercury. Pretty much everybody, including Bart's cousin pops up here for an issue. It's just really good and very well told by the part of Mark Wade. I'm going to get the book roughly a 9.5 out of 10. It is damn good. Alright, next up is a book that, well, I never thought I would ever discuss this book. Especially since the book, the, the, this is a series of one shots that came out, get this, seven years ago. What is it? Grant Morrison's Multiversity. Yep. This is a series of one-shots he wrote, and there's been rumors abound for the past seven years that we're getting a sequel. There's a brief fall for it in the pages of Peter De Tomasi's Superman. Now the one-shots are you have the two you have the two bookend issues for Multiversity, issue one, issue two. Issue two, fun fact about this issue, is that it was originally supposed to come out in April, but this along with several other issues that were supposed to come out in April were delayed by a month were delayed by a couple weeks due to a publication error. Yes. Now, these are the one-shots. Multiverse in one, just basically set up for the whole entire list, this little mini-series, this little thing. Yes. It just basically lays the groundwork for it. It mostly focuses on a black Superman. Yes, the guy who is the President of the United States and the leader of Justice in Infinite. Society of Superheroes. It just basically a, another take on the JSA. That's well, actually, it's a version of Justice League. All this now, the several ones that you might find interesting. The Just is simply like a new take. It's a modern retelling of the classic Charlton heroes in modern day. Yeah, pretty much everybody. The Peacemaker, who apparently in this world decided to assassinate JFK. We also have the Question, the Tech Core Blue Beetle, even Captain. Pa anybody who's associated with the Charlotte and Superheroes does show up in this particular book. Now, there's actually one one shot in here, which now there's also Thunder Thunder World Adventures. This is a this is basically an alternate take on the classic Shazam family. 
well from the Fossa comic days. It's basically that particular version of the Shazam family in modern day. That's simply the gist of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we also have Captain Comet. Not Captain Comet. Uh, Captain Carrot. If you're curious, though, who the heck Captain... Oh, I almost forgot to mention, but Chain Lightning. Yeah, it's simply put, like... They even have the anti that show up in the storyline where it just basically leads up until Barry's death. Yeah. So, apparently on the Black Flash, the Black Superman's Earth, apparently, like, anybody who actually is a classic character... Also, we have Return of Havoc before he popped up in Justice League America by Steve Orlando. Mm hmm Yes. And that's to put one of this. It just set up for this whole thing. Now, Society of Superheroes, it's basically a mixture of... It's mostly a group led by Dr. Fate in World War II. Along with Lady Blackhawk, Abin Sur. Yes, Abin Sur. The Green Lantern, along with Al Pritt. This whole book is set in the 1940s. An alternate 1940s where Abin Sur is still Green Lantern. Though in a suit that's very similar to the Alan Scott Green Lantern. Yes, it's a very similar looking suit. And this is more of a pulp style story. That's what this particular thing is. Now Chris Spruce does the artwork for this thing. And it's really good. It's mostly, it's basically a mixture of pulp. It's a mixture of like classic pulp and noir mixed with sci-fi. It's just really good. Also, Doctor Fate's a black guy. Yep. And here's Solomon Grundy. Yep, that is Solomon Grundy. Believe it or not. Yep. This is an absolute very fun one shot, and it is just so freaking good. This is actually one that I was not really a big fan of. Heck, even the guys who reviewed this thing about seven years, even they thought this book was so boring. And rereading this, yeah, I can kind of agree. The Just. It's simply put focused on the children of the classic superheroes. And this book is not that good. It's got good artwork. Yeah, fantastic artwork. And... It is just so bland and boring. I do agree with the part being boring. It just... Not enough stuff happens. We have apparently Batman who appears in here. Oh yeah, and he's dating Lex Luthor's daughter, believe it or not. No joke, he seriously is. Oh yeah, by the way, Batman in this world is Damian Wayne. I'm like, that's interesting. And his, his girlfriend is Alexis Luthor. Probably the daughter of Lex Luthor. Which, that's interesting. And we also have Superman who appears in here. This is Chris Kent. You're probably thinking, who the heck is Chris Kent? And why is he Superman? Well, in pre-Flashpoint, this was Superman's adopted son. His biological parents are General Zod and, and, his, and his lover, Fiora. Yes. That's who this character is. And for some reason, they decided to put him in a sort of an alternate version of the new 52 costume with pouches. Basically, he's got the stupid collar. Yeah, Jim Lee was obsessed with that for some reason. It's just not a very good one shot. It just basically, it's nice to see these characters. I, I do enjoy the artwork, but it's a very bland story. It's like something associated with Me Too. Uh huh. That's simple, but what this book is. It's just a bland story, just not that interesting. Pax America. Yeah, this is the one that's focused on the Charlton Heroes. Yep, it's the classic Charlton Heroes told in modern day. It's by far, in my opinion, my one of the best one-shots because it's a Charlton Heroes. And it's written to be really good. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I've already mentioned the whole thing with Thunder World Adventures. It just another take on the JS uh, on the Shazam family. There's also the guidebook. Yes, there's a guidebook for multiversity. And they do explain about what the Ultimate Earths are. Though Dark Knight's Metal kind of in a way screws that up. Let's see if I can find it here. Let's see the guidebook if I can load the damn thing here. Yeah, apparently also in the Shazam Earth we also have an Ultimate Earth all back called Bio 
by by OMAC. Basically, biofacture one man armor core. Yeah, I'm not really sure why the heck he was like that for. And I'm sorry for the glare, just way he appears my phone. Mm -hmm. Now, as for the Earths, Earth Zero is the main Earth. That's what everything Virgo DC Comics says. Earth One is the Earth One graphic novels. Earth Two, the Earth Two series. Earth Three, the Crime Syndicate. Earth Four, that's where the Charlton Heroes are. Yep. It's a new take on them, basically, with Cap Nanum. It's basically like what, what the Charlton Heroes were basically similar to the Watchmen. Earth 5, that's the same family. It's basically similar to Earth S. Earth 6 is basically. Well, Earth 7 is kind of like the Freedom Fighters. Earth 6 is basically like like a sci-fi S Earth. There's Earth 8, Earth 9. Earth 9 is the Tangent Universe. Earth 10 is basically Nazis. It's Yeah, it's all about Nazis. Yeah, this comes from a book. I think it's called Masterman, I think it is. Yeah, it's, it's, it's basically like Red Sun. It's like, what if Superman's Rock ended up in Nazi Germany? That's just that book. We also have Earth 11. Which is basically kind of like, what if all the male superheroes were women and the female were, were guys? Yeah, that's just a bit. Earth 12 is simply the Batman Beyond Earth. Well, it's future. It's also a future version of Earth. Earth 0. Earth 13 is a magical Earth with all work done by Jay Lee. Mm -hmm. Earth 14 is locked. Yes, don't know what this Earth is. 15 is Perfect Universe. 16. It's basically the just Earth. 17. What if the what if all the sci-fi what if all the superheroes were basically space cops? 18. The Wild West. 19. Victor era. 20 is basically the, the secret society. Earth 21 is actually DC New Frontier. Yeah, with the classic artwork by the late Darwin Cook. Great testing artwork. Earth 12 is basically kind of like a version of Kingdom Come in a way. 23 is where the Black Superman is from. 24 and 25 are locked. Don't know what these worlds are. 26 is where Captain Comet's from. 27, 28. Another world is locked. Yes, several worlds are locked. Let's see. 29 is basically Bizarre World. 30 is Red Sun Soup Man. Yep. 31 is basically Leatherwing. Yes, the Leatherwing one shot. This is basically their world. Uh, 32. It's like swapping costumes. I don't remember what kind of this is. 33 just has basically an ultra version of Flash. 34 is. Can't tell what it is. Thirty-five is kind of like a futuristic ver. It's like kind of like a space-based. Thirty-six. Not really. What no? What this is? Thirty-seven is is Thor Killer. Yeah, it's a Thor Killer Earth. How? Because well, they have Robin and Batgirl from that Earth. Yeah, they're basically from Thor Killers from that two-part one-shot released back in the nineties. 38 is basically the golden age of comic books. Yep. 39 is basically, I think it's like Thunder Ages, I think it is. Mm -hmm. 40, more magical stuff. 41. Oh, I'm not really so sure. 42 is Little Gotham. 43 is Batman Red Rain. Yes, the Batman Red Rainer. That's basically what this Earth is. 44 is what if basically Red Tornado was basically human. Yeah. 45, robots. 46, don't know what it is. 47 is like, what, what are the DC superheroes like Archie comics? 48. Uh, can't really tell what this is. 49 is locked. 
50 is the Justice Lords Earth from the DC Anime Universe. Yep. 51 is a version of Commandi's Earth. Yep. Oh, by the way, this book is so hilarious. It starts off with with, uh, with Hitler in the toilet and reading a Superman comic where he gets punched in the face by Superman. Yep. He's like, how dare you throw up my toilet time? And his officer's like, please, sir, it's important. Like, okay, fine. And was like, hi, Hitler. What is it? It's basically a Superman robot. It's so hilarious. Yeah. But it's a, it's a really good one shot. And it's another one that's really good. Mm hmm. But it's basically kind of like the Freedom Fighters of Earth. But basically with Nazi Superman instead of Red Sun Superman. Yep. Ultra Comics is simply like an ultimate flash. Yeah, you have to read the one shot basically to get just of that. Mm -hmm. Multiverse 2 is simply just the end of this thing. Yeah. Now, all these one shots are good except for the just. I do agree with the opinion about this particular one shot. It is. I mean, it, it's great to see these characters. The character designs are good. The story is just not interesting. Yeah, it's what if DC. What, what if the. Children of these superheroes were celebrities. Yeah. I do agree. It Even though it's been like seven years since these one shots were released, seven to eight years, they're just not interested. Well, that one shot, actually, all the rest are really good. I would say my personal favorites are Society of Superheroes, Master Men, Thunder. Like, all the one shots are good. But the, those three, aside from the main two one shots, basically it's just Master Men, Thunder World, Let's see. Well, uh, pa Pax America is another really good one because it's a shot of superheroes. The I would say my personal favorite of all these is the first one shot after the first one, which is basically the Society of Superheroes. It is really good. Like I said, a mixture of pulp, sci-fi. Basically, if you think of old classic serials, like with the Batman serials, think of that with the regular DC with the regular DC superheroes and Batman. Yeah, it's a world without Batman, believe it or not. Yes. Batman does not exist in every single freaking Earth. <laughs> yep. But multiversity is fun, for what it is. And I'm going to give the book roughly a 9.5. I think it's a damn good trade. Now, there is a follow-up to this thing. Mostly in the pages of Peter D. Tomasi's Superman. Yes. Where Superman is investigated up of multiple different Supermen. You might be thinking, wait... Superman investigating death of multiple Superman. This is not like basically what happened in Justice League America with Brian Hitch. Yes. But Peter Mossy had a better comic. Because his dealt with multiversity. And they later on used the multiversity map for Dark Knight's Metal. Which is a really good crossover, by the way. Yeah, but not much to say with these two trades. They're both, both good. I do recommend. Okay, so that's it for this particular view. Next review, two Marvel trades. And after that, two Batman trades. You'll find out where they are next. Okay, see you in the next video. Bye.